for everyone who is just joining us. Uh, hello, I'm Jason Berlin, founder of Field Team 6, whose mission is Registered Democrats Save the World. And the people who save the world, of course, are you, our volunteer army, and our grassroots donors, and every voter we register, the vast majority of whom are women, young people, and people of color. Uh, welcome back, everyone who's just been to a panel. I have FOMO at my own event because there's too much good stuff going on. I can't believe I missed Brian Tyler Cohen. And yet, I, I just, with our amazing partnerships team lead, Kala, uh, led a How to Partner with Field Team 6 workshop at which we had four amazing partners. One of them, Triana Arnold James, is president of Georgia Now, and she was zooming into us from the UN where she's presenting on global feminism and access to healthcare. Amazing. Uh, so, so yes, uh, thank you so much for joining us at this super ambitious, first of its kind, Registered Democrats Summit, first national conference dedicated exclusively to the wide world of democratic voter registration. You're right on time for our next keynote speakers, uh, both of them legends in their own right. I'm thrilled to introduce Robert Hubble. After the horrific 2016 election, Robert's wife and three adult daughters were distraught over the defeat of an overqualified, brilliant woman to a, a nightmare garbage monster. Um, do you remember that? I bet you do. I do. <laughs> like it was yesterday right oh my god so 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 robert started writing a nightly email to his family to make sense of the daily chaos sifting through the noise to find the reality and as he says always through a lens of hope his family you know started forwarding his emails to friends who forwarded them to other friends and now his newsletter goes out every night to a family of about seventy thousand. That's a big family. In fact, he's had to set aside much of his retirement plan to become a Substack writer. And we're so glad he has. Here he is, the self-proclaimed accidental author of today's edition, Robert Hubble. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jason. I just I want to start by saying what an honor it is to, to speak to you. I, I, I frequently um, have imposter syndrome when I do this because really I am doing little more than speaking to my family and you all get to listen in. And then I find myself talking to and sitting next to just incredibly accomplished and important people like the sponsors of, of this event and the politicians and, and, and uh, statesmen who you have. So with that um, little bit of throat clearing, let me say that I have a thesis today. And that is that we're six years in and that we have been transformed by the last six years. We have been transformed. And as a result, we are better positioned now to achieve victory in the next six years than we have been at any time. I want to cover four points. The first is what I believe. The second is how we've been transformed. The third is how those who seek to subvert democracy have been transformed. I think we have to be realistic and steely-eyed about that. And then finally, I want to talk about the path to victory. And that should be obvious because we are on it by being on this call today. But let me just very briefly say who I am. I'm Robert Hubble. I write a Substack um, blog on a daily basis. Um, you know, frankly, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a grandfather, and I'm trying to help correct the hijacking of our democracy that occurred on my watch. Jason has told the origin story. It was a little more uh, traumatic than he's mentioned because uh, one of my, I, I assured my adult daughters there was no way in the world that Trump would win. And they believed me. And when he won, they were devastated. And one of our daughters, we literally had to fly across the country to help stabilize her emotionally and get her back uh, to a place where she could interact with politics again. I am happy to report that between the narrow time period of Trump's victory and the inauguration, 
she was able to connect with um, an adjunct to Black Lives Matter and was laying her body down in front of the uh, entrances to the inaugural and being dragged about, dragged away by the police on, on multiple occasions. So she had a full reco recovery. And actually, the police got so tired of dragging her away and her, her fellow protesters that they just closed the entrance because there weren't that many people who showed up anyway, as we all know. So what do I believe? Um, I believe that we're going to win. And, and what I mean by that is we are going to win in the sense that we will restore the rule of law and we will restore balance to our democracy so that the will of the people prevails rather than the will of those people with the biggest checkbooks or the most extreme views. I believe that this moment is one in which we are just simply experiencing a retrograde spasm of resistance against the inevitable forward march of democracy. You know, the resistance is coming from groups who are fearful of losing unjustified and undemocratic privileges that was granted to many groups in, in American history at the expense of all our others. And we must recognize that this moment is not the steady state. We are in a moment of transition and transformation. And all such moments are inherently painful, inherently unstable, and inherently messy. And in many ways, what we are experiencing is normal. We are experiencing change. It is healthy. It is something that we need to go through, something that we need to experience as a people in order to come out fortified and in a better place for our democracy. But I, I want to kind I, I want to turn to an emotional aspect of what we're going through because that's how my newsletter started, um, an effort to to fortify and stabilize and and um, encourage and inspire my daughters. Um, I think we should be honest about the fact that in many ways the last six years have been demoralizing, sometimes bewildering exhausting. Uh, much has been asked from us, and we have responded to that challenge repeatedly, but we have to take care of ourselves. We are engaged in a marathon, and we have to recognize that the greater part of the struggle lies ahead of us, not behind us. We are engaged in a marathon. We have to learn how to pace ourselves. We have to learn to trust others. We have to believe that others can carry the burden for us when we are exhausted and need a break. We have to learn to work in community, which this is. We have to learn that it's okay to rest when we need to do so. And we must be able to learn to disconnect from the enervating negativity of social media. And this, this summit is a testament to how far we've come. The notion, think back to 2015. The notion in 2015 that hundreds or thousands of people would join us in the middle of the week for a summit to register Democrats is just simply, it's not, it's unimaginable. It is not something that would happen. And yet part of the problem that we face now is that events like this fill our calendars. I was on an event two days ago like this, and I'll be on an event a week from now. And that is wonderful. It is it, it is a testament to how far we've come. And, and I want to just stop here and say that the fact that Field Team 6 is sponsoring this event should give us the greatest hope of all. And the reason is because they have chosen voluntarily to do the most difficult and, and dangerous thing in politics, which is to approach complete strangers and ask them if they want to register to be Democrats. God bless you for doing, for doing that. Um, you are an inspiration to all of us. So, I, I want to just, uh, well, it's the time has gone by faster than I thought. So let me just 
skip ahead to say how I believe we have been transformed. We have been roused out of our complacency. We are more engaged nationally, both on issues and candidates. I think that we just simply need to look at Senators Warnock and Fetterman to, to see what we can do when we focus nationally. But we're we're also more sophisticated in understanding not only our democracy, but the impediments to democracy. Everyone can converse about the filibuster, about the role of the Supreme Court and the nomination of justices and the importance of the federal judiciary. We're more sophisticated in our understanding of the importance of state and local elections. How many of you can correctly pronounce Judge Janet Protasiewicz's name? Everyone. And who would have thought even a year ago that we would all be considered about a vacancy on the Wisconsin Supreme Court? That should give us uh, confidence that we will win, that we have, we have transformed ourselves. We have become more sophisticated consumers of, of news and social media, although we must become more so. I will just say that several times a week, Readers of my newsletter send me some article or, or a press release with a scary headline and say, please address this. And I read it, and it's apparent on the face of the document that there are fallacies and lies and missing predicates. And I, I fear that the readers looked at the headline and paralyzed in fear. And we can't do that. We have to be willing to engage to become information warriors. Now, I want to recognize that those who seek to transform, uh, who seek to subvert democracy have also been transformed. Trump has given them permission to be the worst version of themselves. They no longer view loyalty to the Constitution and protection of democracy as American values. Rather, they see those as impediments to their agenda. They no longer value truth and the facts. They see them as impediments. They no longer value racial and gender equality as virtues to be sought after. Rather, they view them as impediments. They have lost the capacity for shame and embarrassment. They see cruelty as strength and compassion as weakness. So should we be worried? Well, yes, in the sense that we should be concerned, and we are. Should we be panicked? Absolutely not. We must not listen to the doomsayers. We are strong enough to prevail. We should not give in to despair. We should not buy into the narrative negative of the media. If you... If, if someone dropped down onto the planet Earth at this moment in time and looked at these two political parties and said, which party should be feeling good about itself and which party should be feeling bad about itself, they would unequivocally say, well, the Democrats. The Democrats over the last three elections have defeated grievance politics in 2018, 2020, and 2022. And frankly, if you look at the popular vote, we did so in 2016 as well. We are in a position of strength, and we, we must recognize that. So what's the path forward? Well, the path forward is everything that we're doing now, but with greater urgency, more vigor, more determination, commitment, passion, but also humanity, decency, and empathy. We have to recognize that people are suffering and hurting, and they want help. And so Democrats can't simply be about policy and data. They have to be about humanity and helping people. If we can do that, we will prevail. Let me close with this final thought. The other objective empirical factor that we should look at to determine whether we are, are on the right path is simply who owns the future, who has greater claim on where we are going as a democracy and as a nation. And the answer, again, is the Democratic Party. Every year, 12 million young people become eligible to register to vote. When those young people vote, or when they register and then when they vote, they do so 
overwhelmingly as Democrats because they agree with our vision of the future. And the most recent polling shows that as those voters mature, they remain Democrats for a longer period than their parents did or their parents' cohort when they aged. So at a time when elections are uh, decided by hundreds or thousands of votes, Claiming a portion of those 12 million new voters every four years is our path to victory. I'm not saying that we should ignore or or forget about any other constituency or group. All of them are important. But if we can add 2 million votes to our margin every four years, it will lead to greater stability to elections that are viewed as more legitimate and less contestable when in 2020, the popular vote margin was 7 million votes. It was closer than that in the Electoral College, but the fact that Joe Biden got 7 million more votes than Donald Trump made people say, okay, the people have spoken. So that's my message. And frequently, I sign off in my newsletter, as I will do here, to say, if you think about those factors and many, many more, we have every reason to be hopeful and absolutely no reason to be complacent. Thank you all. It's an honor to speak to you. That is beautiful and moving and important, and the honor is all ours. Thank you so much, Robert Hubble. Your clarity has saved my sanity many nights in the last six years and will continue to. You are absolutely right. We have been changed by these six years. It's, you know, it's not, well, it's not so good to have to save the world every year or two. One side effect is that we're getting pretty good at it. You know, and I appreciate always your positivity, which is not a baseless positivity. It's positivity based in detailed observation and and by by finding and reminding us of all the ways that the deep ugly in this country is being met by a deeper beauty. And that is all of us here and across the country. Thank you so much for what you do. That's, uh, Thank you, Jason.